Cherrywood podcast featuring me, Ricky Gross. And me, Stephen Arnold. <laughs> Welcome to the Cherrywood podcast with me, Simon Burridge. And me, Rachel Burridge. Hello, fellas. All right, thanks Hi, for coming on. A bit of a soap podcast for you today. <laughs> My old mate, Ricky, Richard, as we've just found out. <laughs> yes. And we've got Steve on from Corrie. Well, not from Corrie now, mate, is it? It's been a while, isn't it? 14 years. Been 14 years. Oh, and what's geez. it been for you? 15 years. 14. We left the more or less the same year. Because oh, I reckon you, we're going to go on to the sign in a minute, but I reckon you came. There we go. I reckon you came off that canal boat up yeah. north and then smashed up the old bar which killed you just so you could do this sort of tour yeah, and yeah. That, that, might, that might be the thing right are we ready then yeah, yeah I'll stick it up I'll stick it up for you I'll stick it up for you here we go so that piece of crap goes there chicken's falling off <laughs> we're very well in it yeah. uh, I'm going oh, for five minutes now oh yeah <laughs> now um, I mean, that was that didn't even last five minutes did it no so I'm maybe going for one one minute, 51 seconds. Perfect. Right, yeah. we're going to go to our sponsors. When we come back, the timer will start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leave that now. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's taking over the bloody podcast. Right, go, go to the sponsors. Today's sponsors are Dimidishi Associates, Chartered, Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidishiassociates.com. Club Awesome. For autistic children and their families, a place where everyone belongs and fun knows no age limit. And we're back. There we go. They're good sponsors, weren't they? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right. They've so, got. They've got to have. We've got to have sponsors. So, what brings you two together? How have long have you known each other? Stuff like that. Let's have a work. Not out. that long, to be fair. Um, I did pencil at Christmas. Um, a lady director, Lucia, and. She, we just worked together. She said, have you ever met Ricky Grove? I said, no, our paths have crossed so many times. We've been, yeah. you know, we must have been award ceremonies and stuff together, but mm. we never actually spoke. Oh, right, okay. And then um, she said, you two be great together. I do these holiday parks and you'd be great, like, double like you're so similar. So I said, okay. And anyway, um, we ended up working together at Easter, didn't we? Yeah, doing Easter yeah. Panso. Doing an Easter Panso. Just con. by coincidence? Yeah, yeah. yeah. basically, yeah. Um, and we got on really well. And Lucia got in touch and then put this tour together and the rest is history, really. We're here now doing it. Yeah, 19 dates. I think we've been on the road three weeks now. And oh. so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I mean, we, yeah. we started down in, um, well, Cambridge. Steve is um, North Wales. So he came to me and then we had three days of just sort of rehearsing it. We'd already had a previous meeting about what we were going to do. And then off we went. And the first leg was down in um, Devon at Dawlish. Then we went down to Bodmin and Cornwall, Porpero. Back up and then all the way up to Hull. How do you remember all that? I do not know how you remember <laughs> Hull. <laughs> that is one corner of the country to yeah, the other, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is more or less. And then, um, and then back on to uh, the Suffolk coastline, down to the Essex coastline, Clacton on Sea, uh, Mortello Beach, and then Southminster, which is more uh, you know near um, Chelmsford Way. And then um, we've just done Sheppey, uh, Whitstable, and Birchington Vale, which is Margate. And then we we come here, and then we're off, and then to New R Romney Dimchurch, right? And oh, then yeah. Winchelsea, Pevensey Bay, and then we're off, and we finish at Chichester Lakeside. On he's nodding, Saturday. but he don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> and that's why my battery life is coming on me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you've done some miles. Yeah. Yeah. Checking the mileage. No, no, we, we really, should have. We should have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I reckon we'll do about two and a half thousand all in. Yeah. I think it will be something be like that by the time we get home, yeah. So what's yeah. it, like a question and answer thing? Or Not, you've got a routine you guys come cabaret. up with? Yeah, you yeah, have a bit cabaret. of a routine. It's a bit of slapstick. There's a lot of stuff we took away from Panto, and then we'd get the kids up to have a dance-off. Oh, right, okay. we do a sing-along, don't yeah. we? Yeah. It's North versus South. It's North versus South, yeah. so I do Oasis. He's <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, madness. Well, and that's just been announced today, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant news. Yeah. Yeah. I'm over the moon Have you been to see him before? You've probably met him, haven't you? Briefly, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I've had a phone call off Liam as well once. Have you? Yeah, he was mad. At me. Um, I was just, I was meant to be going. I'm really good mates with Ricky Atten, and we used to go away all the time. And he was going over to New York to um, do a bit of press for for one of his fights, yeah. and I couldn't go, couldn't get the time off work. And um, he, he phoned me up and said, "I don't mean rub it in." He said, "But someone here wants to speak," and it was Liam Gallagher. Oh my god! I had a really good chat with him, you know. He's a, 
was on the phone for about 45 minutes. Wow. And he said, I said, I'm on about coming to the Effiad. The Effiad had just set his new ground. Yeah. So he said, phone this number. And it was about six months later, and I phoned this lady up, and he laid on a box for us, uh, champagne, vodka, everything, and took no. nine of my mates from where we had a great yeah. time. I've only ever never really, really met him face to face, though. I've only heard good stories about him, really. He's, he's just brilliant, he was. I thought he was yeah. ace. I'm so excited to have him back. They're my favourite band, Oasis. Yeah, mm. yeah. We, well our first date was at Oasis. It was. 2009, was it? actually. Yeah. yeah. Probably the last one. The last one. The fantastic that, line. I think, yeah, was the last, the last one, yeah. yeah. your first time. It was. Yeah. So you're nearly yeah. done then. Yeah. Nearly yeah. done. Yeah. And, then, and then I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's broke any records I've ever had in a past. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so funny because we got there, didn't we? And we they were just, I think, the support Oh, Kings ad. of Leon and yeah. The Enemy. Yeah. I, wow. I love The Enemy. Yeah. But they, so, didn't, they didn't play for some reason. But Kings of Leon played. But yeah. there was this guy yeah. that was obviously there all morning. He got was shit faced. And yeah. couldn't stand. He had to get one of those stretchers. They wheeled him away before Oasis off. came on. Oh. Oasis didn't even come on stage yeah. yet. And we were just sitting there going, Really? Nice. You missed it. <laughs> yeah. Totally, <laughs> totally shit faced. I love, yeah. I love the gigs. I love going to watch bands. It's so I've not been for such a long time. I need to go. I want to try and get tickets it's, it's for this. It's funny mm. at Wembley because they changed the toilets. Then they changed the women's toilets to men's toilets. There's like. One. About five women's <laughs> toilets at Oasis gig. Oh, really? The rest are at men's. And yeah. it is just like an inch of. Oh. I, I, just, I just remember him saying it's to me. It's rank. I just remember him saying to me, like, this is an Oasis gig. He said, don't wear anything nice. But thank you, trainers. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, don't worry about anything. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Get your wellies on. Yeah, take an umbrella with you. Because uh, that isn't beer they're throwing about. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, really pleased they're, they're back. So, mm. um, right. So, yeah, 2009 for both of you, wasn't it? 2010. 2010. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. I, I mean, we do a thing in our act where I come out and um, obviously I do park life to start with. Oh, oh God, I'd say that the other day. Change the enough. words too because it's um, park holidays that we're doing the gigs for. Oh, uh, right. so, you know, it's, it's a, I've changed all the lyrics. You know, little Maisie's got the ump. She always gets the lower bunk on her park holiday <laughs> home's vacation. <laughs> Park by <laughs> and um, all my family holidays were in caravan because uh, a caravan park in uh, Clacton on Sea. So I do this thing where I say, you know, I tell them about it all my holidays and my bank holidays and half terms and summer holidays. So I know exactly what you're going through. I sort of say that, right, to yeah, sort yeah. Of put my ease. Steve comes out, and then literally we, we have a little bit of fun and games. And um, like I say, it's all going very well, isn't it? Yeah, we we've got five more to do, so we've we've not we're nearly 14 there so far. Wow. Yeah, so the not lights at the end of the tunnel. Now. Hopefully, there's not a train coming. Now, so. can, are you glad the lights at the end of the tunnel? Is it? Is it you, exhausting? Are you there now? I think it's Before missing it. home a little bit, isn't it? You it, know, it's, it's missing. It's it's not. It's it's the more getting to places really mm. because it's mm. all. No, yeah. I mean we've been yeah, so far since last couple. Not been well planned, really, is it? They never are yeah, sometimes. Nah. That's just what they can fit you in, yeah, so you yeah. have to go with it. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we're very fortunate to get 19 dates, aren't we, really? Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, so it's not, it's not, the only the only thing is, is like you're going on at nine o'clock, so there's a lot of hanging around in the day mm. if yeah, you're there. Yeah. That's the only thing, but doing the shows is great, and the audience has been great. The children have really joined in, all the adults. Yeah. They have a good drink beforehand, and they yeah. all join in. So yeah. I think yeah. it's nice because we're um, um, recognisable to the age demographic of people that are in the business of wanting to buy a caravan as a holiday. Yes, yeah. and That's they're right, in yeah. the business of selling caravans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we 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 fit a good link to them saying, "Oh, this is not bad, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. to come and have a, a yeah. your summer holidays in." And there's people, there's cabaret, you know. Truth, truth be known, it's not, not just the, the soaps. You've both done the dancing as well, haven't you? Oh yeah. Oh, what, what, what we haven't done. <laughs> yeah. we, 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 we should we, have we, a little league who's done the most sort of like, well, no, the funny thing is we've been sat in the car obviously talking and we, we it's funny the amount of people we know or we've met that we've got something in common and then we found out the other day we've both done that wipeout in Argentina yeah. oh yeah, right but I never knew that we were talking about that the other yeah. day weren't we yeah because yeah. they only put it in Argentina for health and safety reasons that's it. Can't, <laughs> can't get insured yeah. Yeah. that's why they do it in Argentina so did you, were you guys actually on it and doing it yeah, not together, not, not the same show, no, no, but we did do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I remember Dom Jolly breaking his ankle. <gasps> oh, and, really? And yeah. one of the girls, I think Nicola McLean, I think her name was, and um, her being, as I was being interviewed after I'd done the course, um, there was, you know, one of those, um, um, she wasn't hurt that badly, thank goodness, but... Um, Nowadays, they over precaution it and they put her in a head thing, you know, oh, on a stretcher like that. Yeah. And she went past as you <laughs> she were going went on. past as I was being interviewed. And I was like, 
What Tell have I got myself into? <laughs> Telly Christian broke his ribs when yeah. I was doing that, and another girl pulled the neck. Oh, but oh, you are wearing God. that protection thing. That it's more of a light. That, that's it, but more of a light jacket. It's funny because people have folded in half on it, haven't they? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good laugh though. Thing. It's a great laugh. I and you get to go Argentina. Yeah, yeah. People back me up on this though. You know that wall with the boxing gloves? Oh yes. yeah, yeah. You do not hear that is so pneumatic. <laughs> with the amount of PSI behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But when it starts up, because they start you up after you do the first little bit, yeah. it is like, I won't do it, but it is like, it's like a machine. Yeah. And you, you know, know you're going to get it by and, and even if even if it just if it, even it just glanced you, it would it takes you out of the equation. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's and, really slippy as well. Oh, I think it's obviously it's all yeah. water, you know. Yeah, but um, that was a wonderful experience. So yeah, it's like funny we've been sat in the car talking about, and um, you know, I, I was very pleased to learn about Steve's background. I mean, I didn't know that uh, Steve was a very good amateur boxer years ago. Right. Okay. And and um, Steve, you could elaborate on that in a bit, but like yeah, like I say just quickly. It was like just learning about what it was like for Steve starting in How we both started and, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, you know. So Yeah, we can move on to that then. So who yeah. wants to go first on that? Because <laughs> you with East End, ain't, ain't, ain't a stepping stone Grange Hill? <laughs> 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 London's burning and East End or something like that. Well, it was, the bill. So the, the, the bill, the bill. That's yeah, right. so I, done, I got into the business via sort of Amdram, really. And um, I, it was like a second education for me. And then someone said to me, because I would be in, it'd be in one and I'd be reading for one and then I'd be, um, you know, not starring as such, but performing in one. And so someone said, have you ever thought about going to uh, drama school? And I was sort of 27 at the time. So before that, I had a very successful chef career, but I didn't want to do it anymore. And um, I sort of went, OK, yeah, I'll look into that because I do enjoy doing it. And I think it's the extrovert in me that does it. But not only that, I enjoyed it because it was like, you know, so you're getting a little bit of a, an ego from a massage from the audiences and that. And I've always thought I was quite quirky and extravagant sort of thing. Yeah. Not extravagant, I mean, like, you know, um, very keen to please, as it were. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so, yeah, I auditioned for all the drama schools. I got in one called The Poor School that worked at evenings and weekends. Right. And so by that process, I could then, with my catering skills, go on an agency's book for the right, day. Right, right. So oh, where's this right. London? This, this was in London, right, yeah. yeah. And then um, by freak chance, the, the, the planets aligned and um, I, I then started to manage a place called Shaw's Freehouse. And um, it was, incidentally, it was set up by a guy who had uh, done What's On Where To Go In London, the original sort of Time Out yeah, magazine. Yeah, yeah. And that was based literally on the Pentonville Road, just where the poor school was. So I'd go in in the mornings, run the, the pub, because it was closed in the evenings because mm. of the Barnsbury Estate's quite a dangerous area right. and they never used to have it as a... So it was used as a lunchtime pub by the NatWest Clearing House. <clears throat> and then I, I'd literally finish work and then go Going straight to the drama school from like six till uh, 10 at night and then go home and the, the process repeat, get four hours mm. kip and then oh and away God. you go again and then work at weekends as well. So, And then that was the process of going for drama school, getting an agent came next. And then I got a good agent called Waring and McKenna and they put me up, for, I think I'd done three short pilots for the <clears> BBC <throat> I think called Other Animals with Richard Wilson and Stephanie Cole, a London's Burning, a Bill, and then Burnside. Oh, right, you did do that. Yeah, right, okay. of course. Well, Cockney casting back then was very, very in yeah, favour. Yeah, and yeah. It, it always moves. It was yeah. one minute it's Welsh, then it's been Scottish and Scottish Taggart and all those Scottish yeah, dramas. Yeah. And then I got the call for EastEnders. They auditioned 400 Garys, got us down to 10, workshopped it, workshopped it in the Queen Vic because there was no Charlie Slater, no Gary and no... Um, uh, young uh, sister I can't remember her name now Michelle Ryan got the role anyway right, yeah yeah uh, not Zoe um, I want to say it, Zoe I want to say Zoe it was Zoe was it Zoe yeah she Cat's knows daughter. Like Cat's daughter yeah, yeah. Zoe yeah. And, um, and so they workshopped us what the you ain't my mother yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. that one Michelle Ryan <laughs> that Wonder Woman didn't she yeah she was she was Wonder Woman in America for a couple of years she did great yeah she did great she's done really well and um, yeah so uh, and then I got the gig and then the, the, as they say the rest is history brilliant yeah brilliant so um, same for you then <laughs> no, really, turn. mine was completely different, to be no. honest. I was just punched shit out of someone and got the yeah, job. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> 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 no, uh, basically, I went to school one day and my drama teacher said to me, get yourself in the assembly room for 10 o'clock. So I did. I went in there and about 50 kids were there. My brother was there. So anyway, this producer from America introduced herself and this director from London, John Roberts, said we're auditioning for two boys to be lead parts of the film called this boy story about george best right okay um and me and my real life brother went through about seven auditions we both got the main parts in it oh, really <clears throat> yeah so and we got to work with george as well which i'm a massive man well, well we've met callum best we've interviewed yeah, callum best yeah. recently yeah. 
But anyway, yeah, so it went on to win a Best Short Film, the Student Oscars, and it won a BAFTA Best Short Film. Right, and what was the film called? This Boy's Story. Oh, right. I yeah, Channel 4 have bought it now. Right, okay. But um, yeah, so that was basically it. We went to the premiere of it after six months. It took like six months to get it together. We went down to London with my mum and dad on the Saturday, travelled back on the Sunday, went to school on the Monday. <laughs> Come back, and my mum normally had my tea ready for about half past four. And we had a phone on the stairs. You know, she sat on the stairs. The phone just kept ringing and ringing. She kept picking it up and picking it up. Because <laughs> kids, thinking... kids don't know that nowadays, do they? No, you know, the cord, no, yeah, the link yeah. to the phone. Yeah. Like, yeah, I get around the house. Yeah. <laughs> but every time she put it down, it rang. <laughs> and I was going, where's my bleeding tea? You know, it's finished. It. <laughs> anyway, about, about half past five, it stopped. I said, where's my tea? I've not had time yet. She said, I've had about 100 agents for the house. They want to sign you and Kevin up. What? So then we basically picked an agent. Um, we both went with the same agent. And then the rest was history. That was it. We just never so stopped working. Did your brother still act? No. He stopped. We both did. We did a film straight away after that together called Growing Pains. Then um, we did Children's Wall together. Pretty much the same path as right. Strange Hill and yeah, EastEnders. Yes, yes, it was yeah. always, there was so many characters from Children's Wall, young mm. kids that ended up in Coronation Street. I think mm. Angela Griffin. Alan Olsall, um, Chloe Newsom, mm. myself, Jane Danson, a lot of mm. us went. Anyway, we did Children's World. I did the first series, then he came in as my brother for the second series. Then he went one way. He was he did like September in the rain with, um, oh, what's he called? Oh, he did that anyway. And then he, he, did, he did a few other big dramas. And I, I went off and like did Commoners, Muck and Etty Wayne Throp and things like that. And then the call come for... The Coronation Street, and I, ne I was always a bit, I should have do a soap. I always got told never to do a soap at the time. It wasn't right. that cool to do one. And he had a few weeks off. Well, and Bill he, Roach has done a right from it. He's he? done very well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely man, him. Mm. But anyway, um, yeah, so I went in, I went to see a, a fantastic director, God bless him, Brian Mills, and he just said, look, Stephen, this part's one ep. Do you want to come in and do it? So, so he what, said, what? What sort of age were you at this time then? 20. Oh, right, okay. So I said, yeah, I'll come in and do one. Anyway, we'd get us on the set and John Savinant was there that played Fred. Yeah. So I was working alongside him. Character, wasn't he? Oh, he was fantastic. <laughs> anyway, I started working with him. He kept giving me little pointers and stuff. You know, I thought I'd been around the block and all know what I'm doing. I didn't have a clue compared <laughs> to him. He was so knowledgeable. Mm. And we was on set and basically, um, they just when we was filming it, they rewrote another ep. Like, I've seen yeah. another episode and said, "We've done another ep. Would you do it? You'll get paid again." I said, "Yeah, okay." So I did two eps. Next day, my agent phoned me um, and said, "How would you get on your stage?" I said, "You know what? I really enjoyed working with, with John Savin. Said I could learn so much off him." Mm. They said, "Well, they've offered you three months if you want it." What? So I said, "Is he doing it?" Yeah. And she said, "Yeah, he's doing it." I said, "Go on, I'll give it." three months and then i did 16 years wow yeah, oh my yeah. god so i suppose it was just butcher scenes was it being in i can't uh, uh, remember what your early scenes were uh, first all our stuff was filmed in eccles on location at a butcher's um and then i got introduced into the street and they brought me in and i moved in with a character called don brennan do you remember don brennan do you remember the night he had he had one leg he was married to um ivy tilsley in it hmm. yes yeah, Lim Perry. Yes. Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff Inchliff. He's a lovely mm. bloke. Mm. And then we, I got an house on there and that was it. And Established. Yeah, yeah just went yeah, from there, really. Yeah, house, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We were in. And now, then, so when you're filming, is it an episode a day or an episode a week? Or how? Because I'm very naive It's changed so much, that. hasn't it, Ricky? I Ooh, mean, yes. it's, ch it's changed so much. What, well, like what, they, what, they, what they put what in the can on a film is probably about, if that, a minute, 30 seconds a day. Yeah, yeah you do yeah. a feature, it's like a minute tops. That, minute that, that's all you'll yeah. get in the can is probably that. I mean, uh, unless, of course, it's something that, you know, there's a massive part of the production that they mm. can get three minutes in one camera shot, you know, like Dunkirk or something. Um, but no, I mean, soap, um, you've got to know where you are. We don't have rehearsals as such. It's rehearsed and recalled really on EastEnders. And I think it's kind of a similar thing with Coronation right. Street. Well, how um, many you, sorry, how many were you knocking out? Three a week? Uh, but, what, episodes? Yeah. yeah right. Or what else I was doing in my dressing room? I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad that, I'm glad that knocking Richard. out means... 
Stephen. <laughs> I had to clutch my pearls there. Honestly, that's hilarious because that's my what God. I was saying. <laughs> yeah. I no, say. no, we bas- basically, I mean, it's shot unchronologically most of the time and, um, you know, any one singular time you could be working on six different episodes, more so on Coronation Street. I think they, wow. they pushed the boundaries and the, the uh, even more and the barriers, they pushed it forward with having more episodes and um, there was never really any rivalry. I think it was all to do with... Um, the BBC and ITV having those and ITV having the long established soap, you mm. know, uh, of uh, Coronation Street, you know, goes back to that 62, is it? Is it 1962? I think so. It's been going 60 odd years. Yeah. Um, which, not, what, God, Corey? I thought Corey was earlier than that, wasn't it? Was it probably 60s? Was, no, it was yeah, definitely the 60s, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then East End is in its 40th yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 84, 85. Next year. You yeah. might have had the set. I mean, when I first started, we did three apps a week. Mm. So that was your block three episodes. And then four come in. So basically, we did all the exterior on a Sunday and Monday. We did a tech run Tuesday, blocked and rehearsed on Wednesday, and all the writers come down and watched it. And then you filmed Thursday, Friday in the studio. Then it went to four. Right. So they stopped that. And then it went to five. Oh, and then they put God. three units on. So at one point, you, you was filming 15 episodes at once. Yeah. So you could be on one mm-hmm. unit going to another one. So you could be doing like, so Episode 14, then coming back to so number you're two. you're passing other characters that are going to the unit you've just been in to do there. Yeah, yeah. yeah so That's mental, units. isn't it? That yeah. It's mental, it, like it a conveyor belt. Do you know what, though? It puts, you. it puts you in good stead, because I've always said this, because the speed of it turned around so quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From, like, rehearsing. From when I started, you got rehearsals, and yeah. you had time to talk about it mm-hmm. and get directed. Where, in the end, it was, like, pretty much 20 minutes on each scene apart yeah. from the rovers which generally took about an hour each depending on how many characters was in there right but yeah it's oh, always the bacon buses. sandwiches it turned <laughs> up bacon sandwiches yeah it's really quick turnaround I mean, right yeah really yeah. quick turnaround so Pat, that must throw you off if you're doing a scene sort of for one bit and then yeah. the next bit is something completely different then you've got to come back to that scene does that not mess with your head a bit um I think if I can ask, yeah, I think there's, there's, oh, there's an element. You know I mean? um, we get a lot of help. I mean, costume are fantastic. Makeup are fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> See, look, they've even got our little <laughs> names from yeah. <laughs> Gary and Ashley. <laughs> 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 and, um, <clears throat> go on. Um, go on, yeah, so, um, yeah, I'll give you, for instance, which is quite funny, which people don't realise, is we always used to film the externals first. So if there was three episodes in what you'd call a block, all the external stuff would get filmed outside. Yeah. And then for the second week, that team would move into the studios. Right. Okay. And then the next three episodes would film on the lot. You with right. me? Yes. And so it would revolve around that. And so sometimes if you're in the next three episodes, you'd come from the internals to go to the externals yeah. okay. and that. Yeah. But when you're filming the externals, say, for instance, it's what you call a direct cut. So I'm just about to go into the Queen Vic. Mm. I'll see you later, Mo. Open the door to the Queen Vic. And then next, the next week, you'll be filming when you, inside, right. through the door. Yeah. you coming through the door. So yeah. if it's raining outside, you've ah. forgotten all about it by now. <laughs> just a little bit of light drizzle. You'd go, yeah, see you later, get through the door. And then like a half past seven in the morning, ne- like a Wednesday on, right, the makeup person would come up to you go, right, you're right, yeah, morning. He certainly used to wake you up, and, and, it, and then little bits like that, you go, Right, so I've just come from that bit, so that could help, that helps you, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, and not only that, I mean, I always used to put on my scripts where I was going to and where I'd just come from, right? Okay. And then if it was a major storyline, I remember Casey Ainsworth, fantastic actress, mm. um, I think she won the um. Uh, I think it was a uh, soap award for the best actress that year or whatever it was. Uh, I think at the BAFTA as well. I think on mm. national TV awards that was it. And um, she used to sort of write down a sort of one to ten, so you don't want to burn too quickly. And um, so if it was like Trevor was going to hit her over the head with the iron like it was, <laughs> yeah, or yeah. she hits Trevor, that's the yeah. ten, isn't it? He's done yeah. well for himself, and he was in um... Batman, yeah. He Alex was in, Fence. yeah. He was also sorry to jump Government, in, but no, he was not. also in the old disaster, wasn't he? He was naked in a disaster, one of the miners. Oh, what was he? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What's it called? Um, Don't worry, Auschwitz. Oh, was he right? Oh, oh no, he? Not, not Auschwitz. I've <laughs> got that wrong. The, the boy in the strap jump. No, 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 I'll put it wrong. No, I don't know Ooh, what you're talking about. There. <laughs> no, I can't believe I've said oh, Auschwitz. No apologies to anyone. <laughs> um, not Auschwitz, the disaster, the um, nuclear disaster. What's that one? Oh, um, Chernobyl. He was in Chernobyl. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was one of the miners 
digging oh, okay. underneath to get the water in there to keep it cold. Brilliant. And oh. yeah, you start bollock naked in it. Yeah, uh, he's, yeah he's, he's done a well. He's a good actor. Good, he is a good, good actor. actor. Yeah. yeah, South yes. African by origin as well. Is he isn't really? He? Because he was, he, in, he was in the. I've done a coach trip with um, Alex. He came off Irish, didn't he? In celebrity in... coach trip I've done with Alex. Really? Yeah, so I learned a lot about his career and his family. He's, you know, he's a good screen actor. I mean, he's, he's, done, he's done a few big features. He's very know? good. Very good actor, actually. Yeah, sticks by his guns as well. Sorry. No, no, you were. So, yeah, that one to ten is what Casey. Um, literally uh, uh, showcased to me and said, look, that's how I do it. And I sort of, you know, you, you beg, borrow and steal when you're new to it. All. But we were talking the other day and we, we had a fantastic story, Stephen, with the lovely um, Hilda Ogden and Stan Ogden's death and how um, Jean Alexandra, the actress, yeah. played it. And um, what you, she, she basically, she thought about this. Yeah, she did. She basically, it was just one of the best moments I've ever seen. And she was... Such an intelligent actress. I mean, I never got to meet her. Um, well, work with her, I've met her, but I never got to work with her. But when her husband passed in it, she never broke for about three months. So the right. audience must have been going, God, what is wrong with her? That's, that's her. a natural They were thing. so close. They were so close. Yeah. And it just come out of nowhere. So it was like three months on, and she's singing away, doing, you know, polishing up and stuff, and she just goes in the drawer, and there was his glasses. Right. And she picked his glasses up, and that's when she broke. And it was such a poignant moment, you know, yeah. clever, brave actors do that. And the scripts, a lot of the scripts go, he breaks down here, he breaks down here. John always taught me, John Savadant, who taught me everything I know. He always said, it's like blowing up a balloon. Just blow it. Blow yeah. it. Yeah. And then and when then it's ready go. to bang, then you bang. Yeah. So, but keep them getting. Have them shouting Brilliant. at the telly and going. So yeah. you discuss that with the people writing the script. You don't um, really have time, no. You don't really see it. So they, they're relying on you when to... Basically, we'll when, when I was there, so five writers would get five episodes. They wouldn't know. They'd, have, they'd all have a synopsis. Right. This is what I was aware of. This is what I got told. Then the following week, they wouldn't know. So you had to basically do your own continuity I and see. do your own journey right. on your storyline. Oh, so see. there was the bit of, well, the new director's coming. Well, he breaks here, Stephen. I know, but I'm saving it till, yeah. till this episode because... Mm. It'll just be too much crying yeah, that every is, episode. That's, yeah. um, that's an extra level of acting, isn't it? Mm. Let's be honest, because you, have to you think go to about a movie, that. they, they mm. seem to regard movie stars up here, and then you soap guys down here. Now, that's, no. that's so wrong. And I remember Ross, Ross Kent kicking off once an award ceremony saying how much harder it is to yeah. be a soap actor. Mm. Yeah. You know, a movie guy, yeah, he's got a journey, but he hasn't got a journey that's so jumbled up and you're having to keep a note on it. Yeah. Do you yeah. Know what I mean, I, mean? I think one of the hardest things is, um, you know, you look at. Uh, the narrative of how a character you've got to be infinitive as a character to take anything on board mm -hmm. so as soon as you put a blocker on something you're actually kind of being abusing the writer by saying oh i don't think my character would do this yeah, yeah. so you as a person have to find a way of becoming the the fool the fop the hard person yeah. that, you know and that's that's our job as it were to take off the page what that writer has, has, has had a vision of when they've been doing that, all of it, you know. So it's almost like, well, even if you play a weak character, you've got to have it in you that you then are the, Could you know, like it. Nigel. Yeah. Like yeah. Nigel used to be, he used to be yeah. all funny. And but then, then all of a sudden remember, he smacked Phil in, in, the, in yeah. the face, didn't but he? I yeah. remember, um, and I had one of those moments, and Steve very graciously bowed down to that. And um, and said, yeah, that's one of those things where it makes Gary look good. Yeah, mm. you know, it's it's all of a sudden that's the the drama in it. Mm. You know, yeah. an unexpected turn of events, yeah. which then the audience looks at and says, "Wow, yeah. good old Gary for yeah, doing yeah. that," because yeah. Phil's been having a fiddle up with uh, Dawn or whatever. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so finding that, but I remember um, years ago, I, it was, and I wanted to be taken seriously, but there were too many people trying to be a, a gangster or a hard man on the on the soap. Mm. And there was too, too many people wearing black leather jackets in the Queen Vic sort of thing. <laughs> and um, in the storyline, it was Mark Fowler's uh, stag do. And um, Gary was organising the stag do. And he decided that everyone should come as their favourite fruit or vegetable. And I bags, <laughs> I bags the banana, right? <laughs> and I went, oh, really? Do I really have to Dress up as a banana. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to be taken seriously, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. I want to be taken seriously. <laughs> Anyhow, I said to Sean Williamson. Is that why I have a skin full now? <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said to Sean Williamson, I said, he said, what's the matter? I said, oh, look, I said, they've got me dressed up as a banana. He said, mate, he said, the other week I was in stockings and suspenders. <laughs> he goes, 
phone your bank manager, get a balance. And that's what I did. And I went, right, where's the banana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where's the banana outfit? Yeah. Get your head around it. You know, and, yeah, and yeah. then that was it. And, and then obviously we were entertainers at the end of the day. And um, and, and that that's what uh, you credit to your, your ability to do that. You know, it's, it's almost like you have to have a double life. You have to have you as the person yeah. and then you as the character. And you have to still remember, oh, I'm married to this person. I did this. We've got this. We've got this house. And you have to remember all those details yeah. Yeah. for you to then go on set and go, right, I've got to leave me behind yeah. and step into Gary uh, or Ashley and stuff true. like yeah. that. A dual existence. Yeah. yeah. So, almost. Yeah, you guys played reasonably lovable characters, didn't you? You yes. wasn't ever a sort of dice. It may be at times. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't really arsehole. So did you get any abuse from the pub? Because some people <laughs> will abuse you on like, Oh, like not, Dirty Den or someone like that not, probably not, got loads of crap in the Not street. really. But you, you were a lovable character well, anyway. See, if you're the boy next door, the only thing is when you do that is everyone thinks you're approachable. Oh. Yes, where, yes. Where, where we babbies, they're a bit like, they, they leave them alone and think, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. they don't talk to me, they might shout at me. Yeah. So they got left alone a bit more. Mm. Where if you play a nice cat, say, all right, all right, all right, how you do, mate? Like, all right, yeah, yeah. so how are you? Yeah. 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 Having your dinner going, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Where yeah. I worked at the time, of you guys being on there, there was a security guard. He was from Yorkshire and he used to do a really good impression of you. Did yeah. you ever, did you change your voice a little bit? I did, yeah. Um, I did that f from the day one because I watched John and uh, he was this big booming character. And you wanted to be, opposite, yeah. Yeah, and, and Ashley was his wife, yes, at first. He wasn't even his uncle. That got established then. He, he was a salt for you, then he ended up being my dad. That's right. But yeah. I wanted to bring something different um, to the character in terms of, well, he's this big, booming character, and I was his YTS, like I was playing a 16-year-old, mm. and, you know, it's your first job, and you're small, and yeah. you're weak, and he's yeah. big and powerful, so I put the voice on, mm. and that's when I spoke like that. Mm. So, so he you... was big and booming, and I was Yeah, so you there. were playing a 16-year-old. How old were you actually? About 20. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Do, 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 I've, not, I've not asked you this. <laughs> um, many a time, sitting in the car to Hull and back, as it were. Yeah. So you can do that voice just pretty much. Well, I could talk like it all day long. Like, all right. Yeah, so yeah. How do you do that? Is it, just go back. Like, back front, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, easy. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call him putting gravy grains. Yeah. It's a normal. No, thing, that's clever. No, I say it's, that's it's, clever. It's, it's just the reason. You know the reason why I did that. Yeah. So I say this. Is how, what, what an intelligent actor he was. The best I've ever worked with John Sam. And. Everyone just thinks he did it off the cartoon. Is it Deputy Dog? I say, I say. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Sam. Right. He didn't he research when when Fred Elliott was was born, what kind of job he'd have had, and in the cotton mills and all the noisy factories Repeat years themselves. ago. And if, yeah. if you ever watch John doing his scenes, he all he always goes, "I'll see it." I'll, yeah. Are you going for doing this after? I say. That's right. Are you going for, yeah. And he used to mouth it because people couldn't hear each other. That's a, oh, so that's wow. why he put it in. That's oh, also that's a Les Dawson thing. Yeah. You yeah. know when he used to play that woman? Yeah. Sister, that, Sister, 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 Sister. She used to finish the sentence. He used to finish, yeah. say she, but he used to finish the sentences yeah. by going, yeah. that's because the old Mills was coming in the yeah. way and they were mouthing the yeah, rest because it, it wasn't worth actually saying anything. Yeah. And that's gimmick. why John did that. And everyone just think it was a gimmick. He wasn't. You played wow. on stage, didn't you? I didn't. You played that on stage. Yeah, I did Sissy Nade. That was my first play after leaving that, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Played Terry Nade. Not parody, but yeah, parody of... Les Dawson and um, Roy yeah, Barraclough. Roy Barraclough. Yeah, I played Terry Ravencroft that that wrote all the stuff. Mm. Um, mm. It was interesting that actually, you know, learned a lot about Les's life and and Roy's as well, and and the writers. It's just that's why I love doing plays and doing it. You know, you learn yeah. so much if you like. Say you do a World War One play or mm. shit, you learn something because you research what you're doing and yeah, what, yeah. what what would it have been like then, and you know, put yourself into their shoes. And that's mm. why I love doing plays now in different mm. roles. I really enjoy doing that. So both your characters on screen did feel, have... Sorry, feel free to eat yeah, at yeah, the same time. Yeah. I, I'm not eating, so I'll, I'll, I'll ask the questions. We'll stop there. <laughs> Go on, would you um, like some? No, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is when we just don't turn their back on my <laughs> Just go, oh, just yeah. Think, I'm glad you said no. <laughs> <laughs> did you not bring anything with you, Rachel? <laughs> I have a salad. All <laughs> oh, right. Go on, sorry. Um, so both of your characters do have quite um, dramatic storylines, but you're also quite comedic as well. What do you prefer to act? Is it? Do you like doing the serious stuff, or do you prefer to do the comedy? Or does that get I think really a, a bit of both? Really, everything in moderation. Really, I mean, the serious storylines that I went through were quite. I mean, I, I tried to commit suicide as Gary. I think I got married twice. I. Uh, what else is there? And then, you know, in between it, I had then a wonderful partnership with Cliff Parisi. So they kind of 
Um, the sort of Slater sisters disbanded slightly after Zoe went off and mm. then little Mo went and then Jesse went and, and, and Lynn went. So it was left literally what we're going to do with Ricky Groves, the actor playing Gary. And so that's when Cliff came in. Interestingly enough, Cliff was in two episodes of EastEnders before the character Minty as the landlord of what we used to call the flea B&B. So oh, if okay. a character was really okay. in dire straits, they'd go to the flea B&B, like, and you see them and the curtains are all rotten. Yeah, and, yeah I remember you know, so that. Did they give him a new character? Yes, completely and utterly. Really? No, that because, happens a few times, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm. Happens all the time. Yeah. And um, it's almost like um, he was really, really horrible. As the, <laughs> as the, where's my rent, Janine? And all that, you know. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he transforms into Minty. And um, so, yeah, he's just a change of character. And, um, and then so we became like the odd couple, in a way, with that demographic. And when I first came into the square, it was like, it was really all about the sisters. And uh, the exec producer at the time, John York, brought that family in. I think every exec producer has to bring a certain thing or an idea yeah. to the table. And his was the dynamics between four sisters that had lost their mother, mm. uh, but lived with their father and their grandmother, making a new life for themselves. And Gary was the boyfriend of the eldest sister who actually fancied the younger sister, Kat. And so that was my little first storyline. And uh, the dynamic with the sisters was, you know, where's my hairbrush? Da, da, da. And the long burning storyline, you're not my mother. Oh, yes, I yeah, am. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was the long burner, as they call it. So it's almost like a, yeah. an a over-revealed secret over time sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah, and then that was extended my stay on the square, as it were, because uh, of me and Minty, you know. Mm. But we were just social commentators as... as uh, to other people's ills and woes and like the pub and worked in the arches and, mm. um, you know, then it was back to teenage pregnancy. I, I call, it, I doing call a few it funny the, things. I call it the C3PO. Right, cool. C3PO is narrating the Star Wars films. Mm. You yeah. think about it. Yeah, true enough, yeah. yeah. And that's sort of what your role was in a way, wasn't it? Like you say, you were guiding stories, weren't you? Well, every character would have a, an opinion of someone else. It's the gossip, isn't it? It's the um, yeah. the jungle drums, as it were. Of, mm. um, oh, there she is. You know, there's those moments when a character goes in the rovers or the, the Vic, when everyone goes, oh, <laughs> what we get, the, you know, they've just been bereaved or, yeah. for instance, if just, have... she's teenage and she's pregnant, yeah. everyone's got an opinion <laughs> on it. Yeah, and, that's it. Yeah. You know, and it's Doc Cotton. <laughs> yeah. Lovely, you know, June Brand no longer with us. Mm. But mm. her religious side to it, mm. you know, as, oh, you know, she'd always quote the Bible and stuff like that as a character. Pam St. Clements would be probably teenage pregnancy. She'd probably gone through it herself as Pat would have gone, don't worry about it, love. Yeah. Happened to me back in the day. Do you know what I mean? That's right, yeah. And then yeah. obviously you'd have other people's opinions on it, like the father, Charlie Slater, if would be like, I know what you people think. My daughter's not like that, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's just everyone's opinion coming through and the writers knowing that as well, what to rely on, what, what character to say what or what, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, uh, those little moments are great to play. Were, were there any shockers for you when people were left? Like, I was going to suggest one, like Nigel's wife, but that is actually your ex-wife, isn't it? I'm not even trying to... Nigel's wife? What Nigel? was Nigel's wife who died suddenly? Nigel's Nigel, wife? Nigel. Nigel. That no? was Debbie. That was way before me. Oh, was it? Yeah, Debbie. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. That's probably way was, before I was born. <laughs> really? Was it that long Nigel ago? went on, uh, I can't, I think he's at, the actor's name's Paul, isn't it? I can't remember. He went on to do Hobby City, yeah? That yes. One. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, that was before you. I felt like oh, that was a range. well before sort of, me, yeah. Really? She yeah. died suddenly, do you remember? Yeah, that's right. And then yeah. she brought round mugs with Rest in Peace, whatever mm. her character's yeah. name was. Um, is there anyone that you're like, oh, God, I've just found that they're getting killed off and... I can't oh, believe no, it. Can't believe secretive. they're doing that. They're quite or... secretive about all that sort of stuff, really. Mm. So have some of them been shocked for you, like shocks for you when you're on, on set and they're going, oh, by the way, this is now going to happen. You're like, oh, my God. Do you know what? Sometimes, I mean, so I suppose you, you, do, don't, you do read, you read the well, scripts. Yeah. <laughs> you speed read the scripts and then most people, when they get their episodes, go straight to what the dialogue's about and what, what the storyline <clears> mm. is. Mm. You've no need to see what's happening with <clears throat> Bradley and, and, and Lacey. Uh, mm. Or Stacy, sorry. You've no need to know what their little domestics about, mm. well, and and so it, you can use that to your advantage if they do make an announcement, and then it's more natural to just go, well, I don't oh, know I that, did, yeah, because yeah, I was lazy enough not to read the whole script. <laughs> oh right, okay, perfect. <laughs> so and, sometimes that shock look is actually genuine. Yeah. <laughs> so what are they going on about? <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Because you wouldn't, would you? Why would you know? Because you right. wouldn't. They wouldn't. They're not going to say, look, this is what we just said. 
in the in the kitchen about two yeah. days ago. Yeah, you're just going to go, go to your bit. Oh, yeah, like <laughs> so <laughs> you've both had that meeting about your last appearance. Mm. Yes. Do you want to delve into that? How did that feel? Well, did you know it was coming? Did Stephen, you, you go first, Steve. I, I was made up. To be fair, um, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't met. I was. I knew it was coming, um, but I, I did want to be killed off. You I did. Want, I did. Yeah. Um, and I went up to see Phil Collins, and they said, "Look, the thing was for me once John left, John Savadon, we was a partnership, and it wasn't quite the same for me then." Um, I, I did. I still enjoyed it. I had a fantastic time on Coronation Street. I really enjoyed all my years there. But I went for a meeting with him. He told me, "Scott, I said, Tim, tell me, tell me, you're killing me off, though." He said, "Yeah, we're killing. You're going for the 40th anniversary live, which was great." <gasps> I was going to ask yeah. if that was live. Yeah. It was live. Have you done a live one? Sorry. They, they did. They one. did do right, a okay. live one, but I think he said you... said the anniversary one with their 52 cameras on it. That one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've never done that. Sorry. Carry on, mate. Carry yeah. On. So. Um, yeah. So. I, it was a fantastic exit, you know. It was just a, a great way to go. Shook hands, said all the best with it, and I just, I think when you know you're going as well, you want to leave yeah. and you want to go as quick as you can. You like counting the months down then, because you want to go and do new things. And because how many months in advance did they tell you then? Well, or would you five know? months? Really? You still got yeah. to work literally. Yeah, really you got time to get pants win and stuff. <laughs> 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 But yeah, it was just it was it was mutual. It was I was happy with that, mm. and they was happy with that. And um, I, I look back on that program with such such fondness and such great memories. You mm. know, I was I was gifted to work with John Julia, um, and just to get the storylines I got, you know, and and the chances that they give me there, um, I, it was a great great learning curve doing assault for such a long time. Um, but yeah. I, when I was going, I just I said to myself, once I walk through these gates, I ain't coming back through. Yeah. That's what was in my head because I always think, if the character's closed down, you're not always thinking the back, would I go would back? Would I do it? Yeah. yeah. Where, there's no way I would. There's yeah. no way I can. Is that so, how you feel with yeah. yours? Yeah. Yeah. Is that how you feel with yours? Um, no, mine was um, completely different, really. I mean, it was a case of um, they sort of ran out of ideas for us. They weren't writing for me and Cara, who was uh, Dawn Swan. So that was my squeeze. And it's funny enough, yeah. I was talking to Steve Bates, but I never mentioned the boat that, t that turned up, did I? The narrow boat. I said the little, no, it was a little, little two-berth cruise, I think. That turned up one day. <laughs> I remember seeing it there, and I thought, I wonder what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> and um, obviously, it was a catalyst to, uh, to get me out with, to leave on the boat. And yeah. No one's ever left on the boat before. I just assumed that was a narrow no. boat. No, it wasn't. No, it was a little tiny little, uh, like a Shetland mm. thing. Like right, yeah. Done, eh? And... Um, yeah, and so um, I remember seeing it one day, and then it moved, and it was there was a great big, massive um, uh, scenery dock set upstairs at Elm Street, and you go in there, it's huge. It's late as a, a remnant of when they used to make the big movies there. Right, huge, you know, vaulted ceilings with these huge, and it was up there. You know, they've got massive industrial lifts, and it's on a trailer, and they were doing <laughs> it up, making it seaworthy. <laughs> so they went to see the. Um, uh, the exec, and uh, he said, like, you know, it's not really working, we're not going to... So me and Carl said, right, well, okay, we'll, we'll go then, we'll go and, and we'll go out on a high. And uh, they gave me the sad music. Yeah, the so piano, was, the piano he said, no, and Julia, violin... It's called Julia's theme, that is. <laughs> oh, is it? Right, yeah, okay. there's, there, Do you know what, a little known fact is as well, there's also a barrel organ version of EastEnders music that's right. never been used. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> like, I, know, I met the guy who actually <laughs> done the theme tune, done mm. the theme tune, and... Um, he said they've never used the barrel organ version. It was meant to be old extend sort of thing. Mm. But the Julius themes, the slow build, mm. yeah. sad one. So they gave me that while I sailed off down the river. And only other one person, they got on a ferry to leave, but you never saw them on the ferry. <laughs> so I'm quite pleased that I'm the only person who's ever left. What's the slow exit? Was, was ever left on a boat, you know, Perfect. to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm quite but pleased about that. What, what, we're saying, what we're saying with Steve, he knows there's a cutoff. But with yeah. you, you... Well, do you know what? It's, it's in some ways, people do... Did they, they always ask you, don't they? Because they don't remember sometimes. Did, did, did they kill you off, they say? Yeah. Did they kill mm -hmm. you off? I'm not being, I'm I'm not being funny. No. I, had to I had to research if you, if well, you were killed off. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. But with, it's memories in lasting memory. Unless you're yeah. a super fan, you know what I mean? You wouldn't know. Yeah, but I had a feeling you was, but I had to double it's, check. Mm. It's know? an opening gambit of people mm. that, that know you. They go, oh, it's Gary off East Enders. And it's almost like a question that they can ask because they feel as if they, they can say they something know. towards it. They say, oh, you can go back then. You can go... 
So there ain't a day goes by or a week goes by without someone saying, did they kill you off and mm. would you go back? Yeah. Mm. And I always say, yeah, I think, don't think I've ever burnt my bridges. And it would be nice to, to open up a little chapter of Gary again and to see what, what he's been doing with, with uh, Dawn or if he comes back with kids or, you know. And, um, yeah, so I, I, would, I would go back and, uh, and do a little bit, if not to raise profile and uh, to see what it's like there now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Apparently it's all changed, but that's life. It goes yeah, on, it's organic, changed. it moves on. Because yeah. usually there was a few more, wasn't there, that a lot of them turned up to recently. What was, few was that? Dots? Uh, June Brown. Yeah. Passed yeah, away. I, I say recently, yeah, yeah. it's probably about three or four years ago, wasn't it? This is it. The time goes on, doesn't it? Yeah. The sort of time has pierced their skin. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So what was I going to say? You said write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. That yeah. was, he was your father-in-law, was wasn't he? father-in-law, Dennis. Yeah, God rest his soul. My, yeah, I passed used to, away. As a kid, I don't know, I'd be eight and... Um, my mum worked in a bingo hall. My dad used to have to go and pick her up of an evening mm. and we should have been in bed. I had to be lookout while my, si- my eldest sister watched like Minder. Yeah. She fancied the hell out of Dennis yeah. Walker. <laughs> and he opened up Debenham, Debenham's in Gravesend. I yeah. think that got her through puberty. Yeah. That did. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he, was, um, he was a nice guy, was he, Dennis? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, what a talent. I mean, he was, um, he was, uh, I think it was four sisters and then there was his older brother, Peter, who, Tragically died in a boxing match. He was mismatched in a, it was a European title. Really? Norman, yeah. And uh, Dennis, because the girls went on to be Bluebell, Bluebell girls in um, Paris reviews and stuff like that, they were all very dramatic. And um, so they put Dennis through a stage school called Corona. He went to Corona, funny enough, with Richard O'Sullivan and that. And uh, so Dennis, even though Bourne got the boxing from his brother, and so a hard, tough upbringing in Battersea, uh, and then, you know, he went on to become like a child protege, much like you, Stephen, in a way, you know, picked out of obscurity. But because he was talented enough to have a rough upbringing about him, he'd always get the, the art for oh, God's role. Yeah, yeah. But he got success with, um, there was a, back in the 60s, there was a, a, a fit, a American produced thing that was all to do with uh, an English boy living with an American family. And an, an American girl living with an English family, like an exchange right, thing. Yeah, mm. yeah. So the com- the comedy and the differences were there with the different cultures. You see. Right, yeah, yeah. So they filmed that in Hollywood. So he was in Hollywood when he was eight really? under the trust fund. It was the original Just William. Right. I mean, you look at yeah. like there's um, that sixties kitchen sink drama, like mm. Edward uh, Bond saved. Um, it's in the list on the, at the National Theatre, Dennis Walkman, and that was quite dramatic for its time. Is throwing stones at the baby in the pram and all that, you know. Um, film like Up the Junction, uh, which was the original, that means where Squeeze got the name from, is that film Up the Junction, all about that sort of pregnancy before the pill and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Post-war Britain bomb site tear-ups. Mm. Um, he was the last person to kill Christopher Lee as Dracula in The Scars of Dracula. Was he really? Uh, yeah, and, oh. he, and he went on and on and on. The, the career went on, stage work, you know, you name it. And he always wanted to be a singer, so he released uh, three or four albums of Dennis Undertitle. Uh, Upwind of Angels and stuff like that. He had his own special at one stage on ITV, the Dennis Waterman special, you know, guitar with Joe, Joe Brown and Willie Rushton back right, in those yeah, yeah. days. And then obviously the, the, the Sweeney, and the story behind the Sweeney goes that um, John Thor was picked as Reagan. That was the pilot for the Sweeney, Houston. I think it was Houston or I can't remember the name of the company now. But, um, and then he said, this is ridiculous because I've got all the dialogue. I want to, and then he very kindly said to Dennis, because Dennis was then Sergeant Carter. Right. Um, you take some of this as well, because that's how it would be. Yeah, yeah. That is how it would be. But some of the stories back then, there was no, it was guerrilla filming at like four o'clock in the morning. Really? Yeah, when the sun's just coming out yeah. on these disused places. Yeah, They said yeah. sometimes they used to cut the padlocks off places, open it up, because they were just bomb sites. You know? Yeah, yeah. And rag these full consoles around and do handbrake turns. Well, and they wow. used, I remember a scene where they just both, Tried yeah. to get capris as close as they could together, break them, you know, break. I think that might have been the professionals. Oh, was it? Yeah, I think that's the professionals. They then get out and go, oh, that's bad. right, it yeah. was a professional. Yeah. Do you know what? Somehow I've merged professionals and Sweeney together. Why? Right. Because of the cardboard boxes they used to knock over. <laughs> Through <laughs> the alleyways. So that was, that, was, that was obviously the Sweeney. That was 53 episodes. And then back then it was unheard of that a cop show, and this is the breaking thing about it, sometimes they didn't get the villain. Oh, right. Before then, okay. Dixon and Doc Green and always all the cop shows yeah. always got the villain. Right. But with this one, sometimes they got away. Yeah, got away yeah. And then obviously after that, then because of his popularity, uh, the Sweeney sort of demised, Minder came along. So that was 
Dennis's drive for mind up with him being a very talented singer. And he then got the idea of I can be so good for you by a group called Kenny. Right. And then that, uh, Dennis's second wife, Patricia Maynard, which was Hannah's mother, right. my, my, my old mother in law. Yeah. She came up with the title. I could be so good for you. And then it just developed off of that. It's a, it's a classic song though. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's not a fame yeah, show, it's a, yeah. it's a bloody good song. Yeah. yeah. And then, so that went on and done that. I mean, they've done two <clears> films <throat> of the Sweeney as well. That was popular back in the day. You know, yeah. when the movies in the seventies, when like on the buses or are you being served? Yeah. Then was popular. Yeah, yeah. They do a, a holiday on the buses or are you being served abroad? Yeah, it was yeah. almost in the carry on genre of that right. era. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then obviously that sing the theme tune thing that was little Britain picked up on. Course, with Matt yeah. Lucas and David Williams. Did he care about it? No, they met him at a, a, a BBC party. Of course, he was in they, one of the scenes, wasn't And they, they said, um, oh, he's smaller than what he's in real life. <laughs> so that's where he became the little small, tiny, yeah. little tiny <laughs> Hand a pencil. And, and he'd be that, grabbing ooh, it like that. <laughs> All that business. And then he, and then he came on, a, on the, the live uh, tour of Little Britain. He came on and went, oi, what's all this about? You know, and it's yeah. the real Dennis Waterman. Yeah. But then he go, and then it, it, just because of the revenue stream that the music brought into it, he then put into contract like for new tricks, that I'm Dennis is doing the theme tune. Really? Oh, and, right. So uh, he did, so, yeah. Yeah, well, it's clever business, you yeah. see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, clever business. Did he ever give you any advice, acting advice or anything like that? No, really, not not really so much as to say that, you know, it was just a question of, um, uh, I'm, this is my father-in-law and I'm marrying your daughter type thing. It was never, we never really discussed soaps or anything. No. I, I was more, you know, sometimes the rest of them would go to bed and me and him would sit having a drink late at night and, mm. I, and I'd say, what was that like? You know, yeah, yeah. and he did be open and nice and tell yeah. me about it. You know, he, yeah. he, he never he he enjoyed me talking to him about the 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 past as much as what he was uh, interested Good. in the uh, the future for uh, the soaps and all that. Sort yeah, of thing, you know, brilliant. A lot of characters, a lot of characters. Excellent. So yeah. you guys have obviously worked a lot, and how was it behind the scenes then? Because was there a lot of waiting around for your Ooh. part, or did Ooh. they just call you in and say, right, okay, we've got half hour to film yours? And then you're done for the day, or how? How was it behind the scenes? Was there a lot of waiting it, around? It, it it was so well organised. It has to be. If you do a soap, <clears throat> everything's got to be meticulous yeah. because it's that fast. So you get a schedule for everything. What time you're on? Like estimated scene time for the next one. So and roughly how long it's going to take for each one. Mm. So behind the scenes, the crew works so so hard. They're they're there before anybody, mm. and you know, and they finish later than anyone. Mm. Um, but it's just it's just what I found was when I left <clears throat> Coronation Street after being there for such a long time, was how professional they was when you went on other jobs. Right, you know, you just phoning up like doing a film. What's my call time tomorrow? I've not got a clue. Yeah. Oh, we'll let you know at one in the morning. You're like, <laughs> well, don't stay up till that. So you just, yeah, you, yeah. it was it was just really really professional. Yeah, that's what Every, it's... everyone knew. I mean, a lot of the crew. Some of the crew members that were there when I were there had been there 45 years. Wow. You know, they'd been there all that. They'd seen everyone come and go. Yeah. So they yeah. knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. You know, they the re really good crew we had. So everything was really well organised. Mm. And was there any time, is there anything that sticks in your mind that you think, oh God, I really messed that up? Or do you watch yourself as well? Not really, no. <laughs> no. I did it. I did it first. I mean, all the family was excited yeah. and stuff. But I think if you've done 12 hours there a day, you don't it's want to like, watch it. It's again. like fitting windows at home. You know, you're a window yeah. fitter. You don't want to come home and do some more. Yeah. <laughs> I just tried to get away from it mm. because it was just constant. Everyone, exactly. oh, what's happening to her? Yeah. You know, if you were at any pub or at a restaurant, everyone was asking questions. So you, you always try to finish work, done, it forget yeah. about it, cut it off. Did it drive you insane, people constantly asking you? You, you got used to it. I yeah. think what I found, especially doing stuff like this, because I live in a, a little village in Wales and I don't get. Yeah, North Wales, you say. Yeah, I don't That's get one of our favourite holidays. We've been yeah, all around the yeah, world. Yeah. North Wales is beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. But you don't get any hassle. It's when I come back to Manchester or yeah. you, do, you think, oh, God, I was in that show. You <laughs> yeah. do forget about it. And then you think, God, how did I put up with that for? Yeah. Such, but you don't yeah. realise when you're there. It just I'm, comes past. I imagine it. the voice. You could hear the voice being shattered at you quite a bit, couldn't you? You get a say, a say, and have you got any sausages quite a lot? You know, we get all that. Can, yeah. I, can you fix my car? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cliff Am I right? Say, in... Yeah, I've got a hammer. I'll fix it for you. <laughs> Am I right in saying you you became a butcher for a bit afterwards? Is that right? No. Ah, do you know what the internet so said? No. That. Oh no! Honestly, I did. I used to open a lot of butcher shops. Right. Okay. So I opened a 
bloke called Bennett Butchers 10 years ago and he opened the shop for me in Leeds. So it was his 10 year anniversary. So he asked me to go back 10 years on. <coughs> so I went back and he phoned me up on the Monday and he said, Steve, I've, I've not said anything. I've just put it on Facebook. You've been since not what, what are you talking about? Mm. He said, it's all over the papers <laughs> that you're a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, right. still on there, man. But, fu- still on there. but funny enough, the week before, I was doing like um, a wrestling match in Manchester, me and my friend Bruce Jones, and it was a bit of fun. We got in the ring with the wrestlers. So the week before was a wrestler, and the following week I was a butcher. So you just think, <laughs> let, him, let him just t- yeah. um, The amount of phone calls we got, but Phil said to me, Steve said, we've got to strike while the iron's hot. He said, um, he said everyone keeps phoning the shop saying, are you actually working here? They want to come in and see you and stuff. I said, well, I'm not. He said, but I do these videos where you come back and do a video. So I did. <laughs> I went back Creepy. and did it. But absolutely not. So Never you did done. a bit of wrestling as well then? No, not wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you, um, it's like a bit of an act. Um, I've done a couple of these where um, Bruce Jones used to play Les Battersby. Yes. He's got one tag team. I come in with another and we have a bit of banter in the ring and then the lads go in and wrestle. Right, so that okay. Was, yeah, so yeah. Two managers. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Talking sorry, I'm jumping right back now. Talking about lovely endings. His ending. Was it Les Battersby's ending? Um was it Les? God, I'm crap at this. What was his ending? Don't know. Where his his wife was there. She had already passed. Oh, that was that was Billy and Tammy. Bill Tammy and <laughs> Liz yeah, Chris what Dawn. was his character's name? Sorry. Jack and Vera. Jack and, Jack and Vera, Vera yeah. sorry, yeah. Les Battersby. Yeah. Jack and Vera. I thought that was beautifully it done. It's beautiful. We got best exit for that. Um, mm. It's very rare that you, like in a soap, you'd bring a ghost back. Yeah, type yeah. It was, it, was, it was really, really good writing, mm. I thought. And it was a real nice moment when they both got up and danced. Yeah, danced. Mm. That was yeah. beautiful, beautiful it, ending. It was. It was lovely. And they were, they were such great people, Elizabeth yeah. and, and William. They, didn't, they passed quite soon after, one of them yeah. did at least. They both retired and, yeah, they both. They both, oh God bless them, but yeah. they were lovely, lovely people. Yeah. Really, very, very good at what they did. Yeah. They were great comedy acts together. Mm. They were brilliant. Fantastic together. It was the old yellow and blue bricked house as well, wasn't it? That's it. <laughs> what, <laughs> tell them, oh, I've got to tell the little story. I'm, I'm sure it'll be all right. The lovely man you said that, that, that he wrote his lines in his, on his cap. Oh, yeah. I've got to listen to this one. This is a Phil, Bill Wallinson that played Percy Sugden. I mean, I've not been there long. And he always used to wear a flat cap. And it's really hot this day. So he was getting on, you know, he was 80 odd. So he used to write his lines, put them on a piece of paper and put them in his cap. So we're doing this scene and his cap comes off and he's lost his lines there. So he's looking down. <laughs> and as I looks up, I just burst out laughing. <laughs> Court, Court, what, what are you laughing at, Stephen? What, what's funny? And he went, what are you laughing at, young man? I said, William well, said, all the lines are printed on the <laughs> red. <laughs> <laughs> and now that's just fell about him. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun. I love that. Yeah, there's just that like story. these loads of people, you know, beer mats and stuff, little. Yeah. Because you're working at such a pace, you know. Yeah. And people yeah. get to a certain age, it, you don't learn them as quickly mm-hmm. as you used to. You know? yeah. I mean, I, I'm like that now. I, God, my memories are terrible. Mm. There was <laughs> many a time that, you know, I can remember just that. Because I used to ask for the scripts in A5. And just okay. literally have that or take that scene out. Mm. It's a Vic scene. If it's not a big scene and you've only got a couple of lines, a bit of interaction, what we then used to do is just look at it. And then if you ran it, uh, sort of a quick rehearse, record session, yeah. you'd then see where you'd fit it in. So you'd go, mm. oh, if I come to that camera there, I can do that line across there to Ian. Mm. Yeah, what well, you know, that, that, that was it. But yeah. rather than sort of... Oh, must learn this. Just yeah. just find a way of doing it there and then. But then just get the paper away and, and off you go. You know, a couple yeah. of lines here and a line there, and then you 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 let it flow a bit for it. I suppose they want too much. They want that stickly about um, saying exactly what was written down. Were they? As long yes, as you they had were. It, were they? they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's very rare to the beginning of any anyone who comes into that show would not necessarily be allowed to change anything because there can be a significance in the the wording of what they've said. Because true, yeah. I, I've yeah. seen I've seen it before, and um, I've seen direct cuts where the word has been repeated in the next scene by saying the, the it, talking about the same problem. So if you were to change it, for instance, then that might upset the flow of it of course, in the next yeah. scene. Yeah, um, yeah. But no, I mean one of the most uh, the best 
thing I've seen is Rudolph Walker, lovely Rudolph Walker. Mm. He's got the keys to Trinidad and Tobago, you know, from Love Thy Neighbour all the way through the 70s. He's yeah, been yeah. a staple um, West Indian black actor, you know, and fantastic at it. And um, I remember one day it was all to, it was talking about Sonia. And, he, and he's like this, oh, no, man. It's like, no, this is not right. It's like the director's there. And he says, well, and it said something like in his script. He said, don't worry, Sonia. I'll go and have a word with Dot. And then I will sort this problem out for you. And I'll speak to you later. And he went, oh, no, me not say that. Me not say that. And, he then, and it, it just translates it out. And he went, don't worry, son. I'll go see if I can sort it. Done. Yeah. Done. That yeah. was where he would say it. Yeah. I'll go see if I can sort it. Yeah. And that's it. You yeah. know, that's the key to that sort of... Definitely. So the writers would be... I mean, you know, a couple of times um, there'd be a silence. Uh, 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 so I'd try and create something and say to the director, look, can I put this in? And they go, well, how would it work? And I said, I'll show you. So Shirley and and uh, Heather would come into the pub. they go, go, oh, look, we've got a couple of angels with us. Yeah. Like yeah. that. And they go, oh, like that. And they go, yeah, hell's angels. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and so it would be like... Little things like that to just try and make it a little bit more um, a comical moment. Banter and a bit, of, yeah. yeah. Banter is such. We, yeah. I always found I only really watched both soaps around your er- errors, really, mm. um, right. and before I stopped. I stopped over ten years ago. She went on to EastEnders a bit longer before I talked her out of it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen all the stuff I've done. Um, I've never seen but I always found Coronation Street to have a bit more comedy in it. There was a than of EastEnders. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, awards nights. Yes. So you see each other. You, you obviously you must have we rushed must have, each other. Course, it's it's, it's incredible. We've never actually it. spoke, isn't it? No. Until now, it's it. But yeah, you do. And what, us, us at Grada. I mean, there was always this massive rivalry in the pe- press all the time. Yeah. EastEnders versus oh, Coventry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they men. like a bit. I mean, Emmerdale's winning it? everything now, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was always that thing. But. We never it's felt true. that. No. I don't know if you did, but we never no, felt we never, it. It was really like, no. if they win it, they, to, um, yeah. they win it. It was, it was yeah. never... And Where's he gone? He's gone yeah. in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you never... No. You never felt no. that. But, so you never had Bill Roach have a kick-off with some... <laughs> with no, some no. No, I know. No, I like the way they merged them once. Do you remember? And they was all bragging about <laughs> who's... Whose de- husbands had died the most when oh, it came on Hills in need episodes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, oh, I, I've never seen that. I think that, they did it for like comic relief. Yeah, yeah, they've always done those sort of things. Yeah. and um, yeah, it's a popular thing. I think the rivalry's there via the it's press, just, it's just the press, it, yeah. and and it was almost like. There's nothing else to write about. Let's write that, oh, EastEnders is in trouble because they're not getting as many viewers as they used to. Oh, Coronation Street's in trouble because yeah. it might be losing its advertising think, from Cadbury's, you know. Exactly so, I, think, I think both sorts are good for each other because Cora was mm. up there all the time. Yeah. EastEnders come along and really challenged it yeah. and challenged it well. Mm. So for the writers and the actors, everybody up the game. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And definitely. We, you look at it, it's like, whether it's EastEnders, whether it's in Emmerdale, whether it's in Crossroads, whether it's in Ollie Oaks, whether it's in Coronation Street, you're just actors doing the job. Yeah. 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 That's exactly. it. Yeah, you're going so and working. Exactly. That's yeah. it. There's no like, oh, they did it like this. Yeah. Or, mm. You don't even think about it. You've got too much on your mind. Mm. It's just get your storylines yeah. done. Yeah. Learn your lines and do your job. Yeah. So you had respect for, I had respect for other actors in other sorts because they were doing exactly what we were doing just somewhere yeah. else. You had yeah. so much in common. That's the mm. thing. Yeah, it's a think... bit like East Coast, West Coast with rappers, isn't it? That was all <laughs> That was all through press. Yeah, yeah. Once yeah. that, and they started fighting and shooting and killing each other just based on press saying, oh, yeah. these eight days, these eight days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When yeah. they actually sat down and chatted, yeah. they realised... Nothing, yeah. Nothing, there was nothing load, there. Load of dribble, yeah. So how was the transaction? Now, you've both left your soaps. How was the transaction from going from soap actors to almost a normal life? Did you enjoy <laughs> that? Um... It always follows you around, and I'm glad it does because you meet a hell of a lot of nice people. Mm. Uh, you, you get the old idiot, but mm. nothing we can't handle after the amount of time that we've put in to sort of be kill people with kindness <laughs> and just move along sometimes, you know. Very often or not, if we see the other person in trouble with someone being a bit of a pest, what we used to do is go, oh, sorry about this, can I just... And you drag yeah. them away yeah. from that person because yeah. yeah. you could yeah. see that they need your yeah. Someone's on the phone, moment. you know, yeah. 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 And we, so we, 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 we practice that really, but we don't do it all the time. But I've, we, I don't think the other day, didn't I? I went, oh, can, can I borrow you a minute? Yeah. Or, yeah not, yeah. not, you know, because yeah. someone was on your case. I can't remember who it was now. But, but leaving, I mean, the transaction, mm. it's, it's going back to it. It's like, you just go with it, you know. Mm. It, yeah. It's, it, for me personally, when 
when I left, it was like, wow, I don't have to learn lines every day. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah it's a job. And yeah. kind of started doing mm. plays then and mm. experimenting in different roles mm. I'd never done before. Mm. So you never had really time to think about it. And mm. over the years, I mean, I'd probably get recognised 5% of what I used to. Mm. Yes. So it does. Yeah. It does die out. It's yeah. always there. It's always there. But... Mm. Um, I get mixed up. Did I used to play football with mm. you? Were you in the army or? Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. this skill? Yeah. You get that a lot now. Yeah. But you, you do get recognised yeah. depending on where you are. But who did you? And, and it's the generation thing, isn't it? Because I know, like, yeah. my yeah. daughter knows you personally from Strictly Come Dancing. Well, there you go. And yeah. I said to her, oh, I remember him as EastEnders. EastEnders, you know? and yeah. She's like, oh, okay. Because like, she's like, who's didn't your favourite? Know... Like, Doctor Who, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. But um, so... no, I, I, sometimes people, I, what 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 character what character did you play in EastEnders? And I've over the years I've gone oh don't you remember me? I was Derek the saddle sniffer. <laughs> they go <laughs> what? And, and a few people go oh yeah <laughs> Derek the saddle sniffer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like it just came from nowhere. It came from left field, and and just say now I'm only joking after the say. <laughs> But if they don't get the jo the joke straight away, they they do go. Oh, they don't. Dare it, dare it, dare it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. So uh, Gary Hobbs, you know that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it is like I say. That transitional period is quite. Um, it's it's like getting used to not being in not seat. The only thing I ever missed was the green room mm. and the crack. Yeah, all the lads together. Yeah. you know, the same lads, and there was a group of us that all grew up together. Yeah, like from twenty up to. 35 yeah of course you know we're on all of this together and stuff and going on different jobs and working with different people was brilliant but it was hard just shaking that off yeah. and doing something else i mean yeah my first job on stage what i found really difficult was was retaining lines oh, because yeah. you learn a lot you learn lines you get rid of them you learn the next yeah, days lines, and, I, the and also when you're on tv this was this is what happened with me I stood still all the time because on TV, obviously, you stand mm. yeah. and you keep still for the camera. And I wasn't using the stage. Yes. And I was standing a lot. and So it looked wooden and I was talking mm. like that. Yeah. And that, that said, you've got all the stage, use it. Mm -hmm. But it felt, it felt weird shaking that out of my ah. system from yeah. going to TV work to theatre work. Yeah. Mm. And now, you, you know, you it's just do everything. Yeah. I'm more used to that than filming now. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that, it's that changing it. And, Obviously, being a lot bigger on stage and projecting, mm. you know, that's that's the biggest thing I had to get used to. Mm. So, is that your? Is that what you like to do now? I absolutely say? love it. Mm. I, 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 I'm not bothered if I don't do TV again at the minute. Mm. I just love doing stage work. What would you like to do? Like some West End. Yeah, I've done loads. I've done. Um, I've done about sixty jobs since I've left stage wise. You know, I've, I've been fortunate to do like Shakespeare and. Plays like the Atkinson Pals. Um, I've did a two hundred a Kez, uh, right. two bro broken things, concrete boots. I've done low Charlie Chaplin story. You know, I've been really, really, really looking, very mm. fortunate to to work, and I've got loads coming up, which is great. But I just love being someone different. Yeah, and yeah. I love I love multi rolling as well. I mean, some plays you do, you play eight characters. Yeah, and I just love doing that. Mm. Do you get nervous at all? No, um, if I've had enough rehearsal time. No, I'm absolutely fine. Mm. You get, it's not nerves with me. You get that little butterfly in your belly, yeah. but once you're on, you're, you're fine. fine. Yeah. You're here now. You just think, I'm here. If it goes wrong, you just go with it. Yeah. yeah. That, but that's only with experience. The first time I went on stage, I was shaking from head to toe. Mm. I mean, really nervous. And considering your past as well, you would have thought you'd been used to it, but it's completely But it wasn't. You had an audience, yeah. and it was completely mm. different to working with mm. crew members Absolutely. that you worked with for 16 years. Yeah. And it was going out and you had a massive audience in front of you and it was like, wow, this is different. This and people right are talking. People are talking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that weren't happening when you were feeling like, yeah. it felt like going to your mind. Trying to remember the words here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, the live one, I bet that took a lot more work. I didn't actually do the live. I did the 40th live. So we right. did the 40th anniversary. I did that one. Um my character got carried out, so I died. Well, I got crushed the episode before. Right. And then my body got carried out on the live, so I didn't actually do the live. <laughs> Wicked. But the character then, so went just for it. and watched it, did you? <laughs> I didn't, I've never seen it. Oh, really? Never, never seen it. it. So when you got carried away, you just went home? I've, I've, never, I've never seen me 
bit where I died. Only when I've done interviews and they've shown clips. I've yeah. never seen the episode. Is it because you don't want to see it, you die? Or... I don't. Because <laughs> Rachel's dad, <laughs> Rachel's dad loves, um, what's it called? Inspector, Inspector Moss. Oh, and, yeah. and he refuses to, to see the one where he dies. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> like, and I, I always try and catch him out. <laughs> I always it, try and catch him out. It on doesn't it. bother me that watching that. I just, I don't know. It's just, you just cringe when you watch yourself a bit, I think. I think, right. yeah, it's just, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah. I, I say I haven't seen half the stuff I've done. I was always no. I'm saying it, 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 my mum was. Uh, I mean, we're on vintage now, aren't we? We're vintage East yeah. Enders, vintage Coronation Street. And my mum seems to, have, you know, she's caught up on. I think it's BBC Drama Channel, um, or one of the drama, just Drama Channel. I don't think it's BBC. Uh, we're doing the reruns of it, and I I watched one the other day. Just it was because it was uh, I was just flicking through, and it was on. I went. I have no idea. I can't remember no. anything about it. And then all of a sudden, there I'm in the E20 club getting squirted with a fire extinguisher. And you don't remember? Don't, wow. and, it, and it's don't not as if it's that. just a line. It's actually you're being sprayed with something. Yeah, I do and I don't, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. I don't, you know, it's like it's mad, when, it? you, when you fell in a puddle or when you fell yeah. like, tripped over a curb, mm. you kind of go, yeah, I did trip over a curb, yeah. but I can't remember the rest no of the day. Context, yeah. Well, yeah. Or it's like, do you remember that report you put in three years ago? Do you remember what it was titled? And you're like, no, why no, would I? Why because would I? That's, yeah, that's our yeah. job, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, that, that, that stuff. But I would expect him to forget. But yeah, like being sprayed by something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think it's because I the week before I was dressed as a banana. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then, yeah. and, then, yeah. and then the week before that, something fell on my head. The week before yeah. that, I nearly got run over. Then I, then I nearly committed suicide. Mm. Then I, you know, it's all things like that, really. But mm. no, it was um, yeah, it's interesting because I, I, I say it's a, a job that you sort of go. Well, like I say, you, back then there was only the video recorder, mm. yeah. and, and and it was like no catch up TV or nah, any, uh, right, any yeah. Sky Plus and all that. There was yeah, just you that. Never watched it at the time, yeah. or, or you didn't. didn't, or you yeah. didn't, yeah, yeah. Or you could yeah. record it, by the way. I'm going to go out nah. and buy a load of me and self indulgent <laughs> all my mom tonight or something. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, didn't bother with that. Nah. So, who is the best person you've ever worked with on the soap or off? Well, we the know soap? yours. Yeah, mine definitely, John. Yeah, with, without with no question about it, he's just. He was just an absolute mm. genius. Was he in did Kez? Am I thinking? No, he what was. He was in something. He did like that, Waterloo. He did Gandhi. He was he the original. Did Gandhi, did he? Yeah, he was originally Phantom of the Opera, <gasps> original <gasps> cast member. Oh, was he? He did he's, the stuff he did, but he was just. It was so unselfish. And I mean, talking about changing scenes early on when you asked Ricky about changes, me and John used to have scenes where we argued and we just turn it on its head. Yeah. And do the scene laughing, doing it, having a joke. The writers be like, oh, I've never seen that. But they'd have it as a row mm. where we'd do it. And John would go in. I mean, a lot of people just went in and did the lines. And mm. when I first started with John, he used to be up all night learning my lines. Mm. He'd walk in and he'd say, oh, dear heart, um, bit of a suggestion. So I've changed this. So <laughs> that's your paragraph now. And then, and don't say that. It's so where's terrible. he from? Yeah. Was he's, he some, not... he's from Guernsey. Oh, really? Yeah, it's Guernsey. Come over on a boat. Um, Basically, he paddled over with his mum and that, like just for the war, he, he come up across. Wow! And yeah, but he used to change it all the time, and no one argued with him no. because it, it was that you know he knew what he was doing. Mm, it was yeah. always for the best and the, the good of the scene. Mm. Um, but yet, yeah, John for me, he was just absolute god, and mm. he was a really good mate. Mm. You know, we were so close. We, we had a really good friendship. Mm. Uh, I miss him. I do. And mm. you mm. went to his funeral, and yeah, the twenty second of March, we buried him this year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. taught me everything I know that one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So Ricky, oh, I'd say, um, yeah, I would say Steve McFadden, um, <coughs> because obviously working closely with him, mm. but you, I learnt the discipline of him. I could see the discipline of coming mm. on, and then he used to bring on the a whole three episodes of scripts just in case there was any discrepancy, because he'd go stop it and just go really <laughs> to go back to something just in case. Yeah. So it weren't just going walking on with a piece of paper. It yeah, was yeah. like, well, if the, if he wanted to put something across, then he'd turn around to a director or whatever, because the director wouldn't know what. Yeah. The, the they're only doing the three episodes that they've been yes, tasked yeah. to do. Yeah. They might not have seen the three episodes previously, no. whereas Steve would point poignantly point out things that were sort of if it, if it was any you know, but nine times out, but no, ninety nine times out of a hundred, he would never n need to do that. Yeah, but he yeah. had it all the same, and um, yeah, but very much so, like. You know, like when you get called to do a scene, oh, you're up next. Just be really ready, yeah. so you're bang on it. Because yeah. obviously, there's a time yeah. limit for everything. And some people, you know, 
they'd be in their dressing room or whatever, and they'd go, you know, they'd get a phone call, just get ready, you're about to go on in a minute, but they'd still stay in the dressing room. Mm. And then that three or four minutes it takes yep. to get from there to oh, there yeah. is then lost. Yeah. I mean, I know the, the crew sometimes have got a de-rig to move along, but mm. nine times out of ten, if it's in the same thing, uh, area, you know, yeah. it would only be a little short move or a camera would just readjust for something. Yeah. And yet yeah. that three minutes, they're not there. But Steve but, was always literally watching the film being seen before being in the next film, yeah. wow. you know, that sort of thing. And um, I'd say June Brown as well, just because of her quirkiness and mm. uh, just her attitude towards it. Um, who else? L- lots of them, really. I mean, when I first started on East End, there's um, Martin Kemp, Spano Ballet, was, yes. I, I had to shadow him for a week. Oh, right. Yeah, so I was sort of like, this is weird. It's like, I'm like and it's like, I'm just like looking at him. Like, okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, He's getting forget, blown up in cars. This, is, this yeah. is Ricky's top ten now. We've <laughs> 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 gone from Steve. He's going through his top ten. Let me check no, so we've got enough memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, 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 you had that close one. I didn't really have any close part. I mean, you mean, Cliff, but I mean, by then. Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another five. <laughs> Do you still keep in touch with um, yeah, Cliff? Cliff and... Yeah, Cliff, yeah. Call the midwife, he's done well there. But yeah. no, lots of things you learn from different people is what I'm saying. Yeah. And, um, and then, there's, um, <laughs> <laughs> then there's you. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> when you're doing like, because you've both had sad scenes and dramatic things mm. as well. When you're doing that, do you have to almost go home and sort of de-energise almost? Because you've yeah. got all this built up depression yeah. or anger yeah. or whatever you've got and then you've just your missus was murdered wasn't she yeah I had, I had a lot of emotional storylines you know uh, um, a lot of them and yeah just after especially when Tracy's character died Maxine mm. I'd never lost anyone close to me at that mm. time in my life so you have to draw on what why I drew on seeing my friends that had lost their mum yeah. or and what they went through and I tried to do that journey in my head and the thing is you've just got to you've got to believe it mm. in your head to do it but once you finish filming you've just got to go Stop. cut off yeah. yeah go home just get yourself what i used to do with scenes like that i used to go up in my dressing room and just sit on my own and not speak to anybody yeah. and then come down walk on set and everyone knew that, you know if if there were dramatic scenes the crew were that experienced enough just to leave you there just to let you have the two minutes before you went on and yeah. then do it right and then, if obviously you've got another scene after that and another scene, so it can yeah. be it can be quite draining at the end of the day. You feel yeah. emotionally mm. tired and stuff because you've put your, your worst thoughts in your mind are going through your head as you're saying your lines. Mm. You're thinking like someone hurting your mum, or yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. you're thinking about all yeah. all these things. But yeah, you just have to switch off though. It's mm. important because I was one of them when I finished work. I always had to switch off. Yeah, I didn't want to. Take it home. Do anything to do with work. I just yeah. wanted to switch off. Take my dogs for a walk. And be myself. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important you do that. Mm. Yeah. I think it's really important when when all you're doing is talking about Cornish Street or EastEnders all the time. It's like, yeah. come on, all right. Yeah. I've I've got to go and do something yeah. different here. Of course. Mm-hmm. Take, you know, I think on the journey on the way home, me sometimes used to go. Oh, do you know what? I should have done it that way. I used to yeah. suffer oh. from that oh, a lot. Mate, I do that. I still do that. Oh, We've yeah. been married twelve years. I still do that with my speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. Should have done, done it that Next way. Next time I get married, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It won't be to each other. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, I used to sort of yeah. I used to do when I moved out to Cambridge. It was I was fifty two miles. Um, each journey, so mm. 52 there, 52 back. So, you were so in Cambridge when you were doing EastEnders? I've done a 104 right. mile trip daily to oh, get there, what? 104 miles a day. What's wrong with you? But I suppose that I just that. moved away from London to get away from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you but know, that could be a good thing because you're processing everything and letting it out. So, yeah. when you're home, you're then, yeah, doing, of course, right? yeah, yeah, so, that's yeah. right. But it was for very much, and I never I always wanted to live in the countryside rather than urban sort of thing. Mm. And, um, yeah, it was a breath of fresh air moving out that way, yeah. You, you need that space. It's like you, and you do. You were in Wales when you were in. There. No, I was living in Warrington where I'm from. Um, right. So that was 18 miles away. Okay. Um, so it's like 25 minutes to get home. Yeah, yeah. But um, even, you know, even just what I, what I did, because I like going out with sociable and stuff, what I found good was um, I built like a little bar at the back of my house. 
So I just had my mates down, so he wasn't going out. Yeah, and yeah. 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 Everyone yeah. know what's happened with her yeah. and all that. Yeah. So you yeah. could just have a game of pool and just yeah. chat with me and watch football. Yeah. And just have, yeah. 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 What, are you a City fan? Or are you? Man U. Man United, United, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's all little things that you do like that, you know, just to get away from mm. it sometimes. But it's all good because, you know, it's I wouldn't get the work I'm getting now only yeah. because of that show. I mean, mm. it's just... It's just it's each person to their own. I mean, people love it and they like going out and do the celebrity stuff and all this. And other people just go, oh, I've finished work for them, go and yeah, do. I mean, yeah. yeah, just I used to go and add him a little bar at home and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. get caught in the web. Yeah, yeah that's it. Don't get caught in the web. Yeah, brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Right, so. let's talk about what you've got coming up then. So, where are you? Because this is coming out Monday. Okay, right. So like, yeah. yeah. Well, we're still doing um, a little uh, double act, a two man show uh, around um, park holidays, aren't we? And we'll um, finish on Monday. We finish yeah. on Monday, so uh, yeah. we'd have done it by then. Oh, so you're done? We're done by them. Nineteen shows. We're done, yeah. Oh, and um, yeah, we we kind of everything in the industry is a little bit big borrow and steal a bit, and we've stolen a little bit of cannon and ball, you Fair know. Enough, yeah. And um, we we do a little bit of a. Um, a very much uh, a bit of pantomime, a couple of songs, and we get we get involved with the uh, the audience as it were. We get them up singing. We get, we try to do a bit of old fashioned entertainment as it mm. were. Was it mm. what it used to be a bit of variety? Mm. And uh, yeah, we've been in, enjoying doing that. So brilliant, yeah. yeah, brilliant. I forgot to mention celebrity soccer. Still involved with the celebrity celebrity soccer. soccer. Yeah, still doing the celebrity soccer. I think we go over to Dubai later on this year. Oh, brilliant! Wow. Yeah, so um, that's going to be. I think they're opening something up over there, and um, so he's uh, just putting it all together. And um, yeah, that's been good. Like I say, we've been, um, I've been doing the crowds and stuff and um, that's another sort of a strength or, you know, learning about how to mm. do something when it's en masse, mm. you know, 1,500 people or whatever yeah. without, with half of them not listening, but having fun doing yeah, it, yeah, yeah. you know. Course, so yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, and, and you know, I do this yeah, well, look alike competition. Yes, of course, you do, yeah. you're, the, you're the boat from up. Yes, aren't of you? course. <laughs> I am, you know what? Yeah. It, was, it was his. If I win 50th. chocolate, I'm happy, mate. I know, there you go. It, it, it was his 50th a few weeks ago, so yeah. um, made him a really nice, got someone to make him a really nice birthday cake, and they thought, I'll take the piss out of him. So I got cookies and biscuits All made that. up with the up guy. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, mate, my mate bought me the walking stick with the four tennis yeah. balls on it. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Loads of balloons hanging off of it. <laughs> Pricks, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, don't bother me. So yeah, you've got a lot on Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Got, yeah. Go on, I've, I've finished this. Thing, go on tour with a play called "Doing the Magic," a new play by a writer called David Spicer. We've done three. They all called "Doing." So we've done one called "Doing Shakespeare," "Doing Who Done It," and "Doing the Dead." And we do one each year. We're doing six on tour. Okay, is it a tour? Yeah, we tour the country with that. Finish that, then into pantomime, uh, which I'm doing in Awood in right. Manchester, and yeah. then. I go to another play called in Liverpool, No Sex Please with British. All oh, right. And do Peter Pan after that, playing Hook, and then I'm doing Bouncers then. Hook. After that, Bouncers. Bouncers, John Goddard John play. Goddard. Right. Yeah. Wicked. So I just, I, I put myself, I love doing the theatre, and like yeah. I say, different roles. It's mm. nice. Nice yeah. to have stuff stuff in the diary, you know. It's not yeah. it's not always the case. No, no, no. Whereas, whereas I don't open my curtains in the morning because <laughs> I don't have nothing to do in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, very lucky though. Lucky for I've got a few weeks off before um I start. Yeah. So but I should get the script next week for this new one. So hopefully touch one, it's a good play and we have some fun doing it. Wow. Fantastic. Brilliant. Oh. Right. What we ask you guys now is to pick a song. We've got a playlist. Pick a song that's relevant to you or something, you know, anything you want. Well, do you know what? Because they've just reformed or they've talked about reforming next oh, year. We both love Oasis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what would you go for? I'm going to go for, because of this tour, Don't Look Back in Anger. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sing it in the, I I sing, it. You I can sing. have your own. You can have your own, yeah. Rick. Um, I l used to love... Um, Slide away, slide away. I love slide away. There's not many ways to songs that ain't good. No, exactly. No. I like even round, round our way. It's round that, yeah. I yeah. love Master Plan. Yeah, yeah, I love Master Plan. Master Plan's one of my favourites. Yeah. Well, this goes rocking well, chair. Well, yeah. And, yeah, they're all amazing. Yeah, B side yeah. records are brilliant with them. Mm. I'm just so pleased they're back. Mm. I wish them all the best. Good luck, lads. Mm. Mm. If you ever see this, all around the world. Yeah, all Absolutely. around the world. Yeah, but because we sing it in the show. Honestly, that's a very good song. Thank you. I do a lot. My band. Play a lot of the um, the ones that you expect, like um, "Don't Look Back in Anger." Yeah, we play "Don't Look Back in Anger." Yeah, I think we've played "Master Plan" before. Yeah, 
You know what it's like. You know what it's like, <laughs> yeah, Rachel. Right. You about. know what it's like, Rachel. <laughs> if you want to get the audience going, you start playing an Oasis song. Simple mm. as yeah, that. Yeah. Totally. Or yeah. Part Life, which we yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's why we've involved them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, Fellas, thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to Hi. meet you, Steve. Hey, Simon, you've been lovely. Thanks, Thanks so much for having me. Simon, thank Rick, you. Known you now three years. Thank you, Thank you. So much us. Thank you. Since you thank he, you, he did a bit of filming for me in a comedy I did. Um, it's called The Tab Theory. And that was, we worked out, that was three years ago, yeah, was it? 2021. 2021. 2021. Yeah. Jimmy and Jingles. And we've kept in touch ever yes. since. But Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Jingles. Yeah. Jimmy Jingles. That was your name Cause choice. Because yeah. it was just after COVID and we had to COVID test you, didn't we? We had yes. to COVID test the whole crew and I was like, I'm really sorry That's about right. this. I'm going to have to stick this in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> good though. And you won an award? You yeah, we won a couple on that, and we've got another one out called Dusty, and we've won, uh, won a couple on that, so that's no, all right. It's all, Fantastic. It's all done. Thank I, you for I do it more for pleasure than anything else. To yeah, be that's honest, it. Man. Enjoy it. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like you, you were saying, going from soaps to stage, filming weddings where you've got one chance, mm. then you're filming a comedy yeah. where you've got as many chances as you bloody want yeah, to film yeah. it. It's, it's a completely different ball game, and that's why I like doing it. Anyway, fellas, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank, you. thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. This podcast has been brought to you by Snug Dubs, Camper Van Hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. That's snugdubs.co.uk.